Hey guys, this is K0MRD, your radio prepper, and tonight I'm doing something a little bit different. Um, about a week ago, I posted on my community tab on my channel how the community felt about having a prepper chaplain core for the prepping community. Um, some people didn't know what I was talking about. A chaplain is someone who is willing to pray, someone who is willing to be a listening ear, a comfort, and somebody who practices the ministry of presence. Uh, why do preppers need chaplains? Well, we prepare for every eventuality. We store food, we store water, we store first aid, we store arms and ammunition, the whole nine yards. But it's rare that I ever hear a prepper who stands up and says in a loud voice, I am here to serve this community with their relationship with God. It's where a prepper chaplain comes in. To prepare souls for his or her group for the fight against the adversary in all its forms. To me, it's a no-brainer to have a chaplain in the group. Someone to serve the group as a whole during times of crisis, up to and including an SHTF situation. A chaplain is there for morale, to be a listening ear and an open heart to all members of the group. It is the job of the chaplain to be there for all, not just for those who think the same way that you do. A chaplain's heart should be open to everyone. By doing so, we bring comfort to the group. Chaplains are non-judgmental and empathetic and have a servant's heart. We must provide comfort for everyone in a manner that they need. Should there be joy, celebrate it with them. If there is loss, then be sorrowful. But bring them the hope for a better time ahead. The job of a chaplain is to be the spiritual leader of the group. We don't seek to command. We do seek to lead by example. Compassion, caring, and love are what drives us, not the need to command. That's not our place, nor is it within our wheelhouse. <clears throat> we must be a ministry of presence for the group, meaning that we are there for them whenever they need us. We're not there to shove our interpretation of religion down anybody's throat. In fact, chaplains are very non-denominational, meaning that if you believe, if you go to a church and you have a set of laws in the church or dogma chaplains don't follow that chaplains are simply there to be helpful to be to be present when people need them chaplains pray for the group's health wellness and the like and we also pray for the protection of members every day we can and do officiate sacraments including but not limited to weddings baptisms, funerals, as well as the Eucharist or Holy Communion. This is part and parcel of what we do. And like I said, we're non-denominational, meaning we're not held back by various dogmas of the varied and different denominations. Chaplains often participate in disaster preparedness planning along with other emergency responders. We provide insights into the emotional and spiritual need of survivors and responders, ensuring that the plans address these aspects. During the immediate aftermath of a disaster, chaplains are deployed to provide emotional and spiritual care for the families, families of victims, first responders. They offer comfort, a listening ear, and a source of strength during chaotic times. Chaplains assist in providing grief support for those who have lost loved ones due to a disaster. They facilitate memorial services, offer pastoral care, and create safe spaces for people to process their grief. For many people, disasters bring up existential questions and challenges the faith of their beliefs. Chaplains provide spiritual guidance and help individuals navigate these complex feelings. <clears throat> In history, I mean, chaplaincy goes back 
clear back to medieval and feudal periods. During the Middle Ages, the Christian Church played a significant role in providing spiritual guidance. Monasteries and religious orders often provided chaplains who accompanied armies and travelers, offering religious services and comfort during times of conflict and hardship. Feudal lords and kings also employed chaplains to save their spiritual needs. Then there are the military chaplains. One of the earliest recorded instances of military chaplains dates back to the Crusades in the 11th century. Chaplains accompanied knights and soldiers offering religious services and support on the battlefield. Over time, the role of the military chaplains ex expanded to include not only spiritual guidance, but counseling, morale boosting, and assistance during times of crisis. Modern Roles and Diversity In the modern era, era the role of chaplains has expanded to include various religious traditions, even, even in the secular context. Interfaith and non-religious chaplains are now common in many settings, aiming to provide support and support that respects the individual's diverse beliefs. <clears throat> Throughout history, chaplains have surged, served as a bridge between the spiritual and secular worlds, offering comfort, guidance, and a listening ear to indiv individuals and communities in a variety of settings. Having said all that, one would not need to be ordained, um, especially in an SHTF situation. Um, just somebody who steps up and offers themselves as a servant to the group to help keep people sane during the hard times that can happen. Well, that's about it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Put them in the uh, description. You know, put them down in the comments section. And let me know if this is something you'd want more information on or for me to dig deeper into. As always, this is K0MRD, your radio prepper. I'm out.